This video is brought to you by Academy, an esteemed unit of Elite Offshore Private Limited, located in the thriving city of Navi, Mumbai. Get ready to immerse yourself in an informative and comprehensive walkthrough of the IMDG Code Supplement. So, sit back and get ready to join us on this journey as we explore the depths of this important subject. Get ready to immerse yourself in an informative and comprehensive walkthrough of the IMDG Code Supplement. We will also be exploring effective ways to utilize the EMS Guide and the Medical First Aid Guide. So, let's dive right in. The IMDG Code Supplement is a valuable resource for anyone involved in the transportation of dangerous goods by sea. It contains additional information and guidance to supplement the IMDG Code, which is the internationally recognized set of regulations for the safe transportation of dangerous goods by sea. The IMDG Code Supplement includes important updates and amendments to the IMDG Code, as well as helpful guidance on various aspects of dangerous goods transportation. It is important to note that the IMDG Code Supplement is not a standalone document and should be used in conjunction with the IMDG Code. Anyone involved in the transportation of dangerous goods by sea should be familiar with both documents and ensure that they are in compliance with all applicable regulations. The IMDG Code is divided into three parts, Volume 1, Volume 2, and the Supplement. As we are focusing on the supplement of IMDG code and exploring some of the key content. First, are you aware of the latest edition of the IMDG code supplement? Let me assist you with the update. The IMDG code, 2022 edition, incorporation. Amendment 41 to 22, will come into force on the 1st of January 2024 and may be applied voluntarily as from the 1st of January 2023. The IMDG Code Supplement, 2022 edition renders obsolete the previous 2020 edition. Let's begin by taking a closer look at the EMS Guide and how to use it effectively. The guide begins with an introduction on how to use it, followed by emergency actions to be taken in the event of a fire or spillage involving dangerous goods. The guide also includes an index to help you quickly navigate through its contents. The first two points of the guide provide vital information on how to use the guide effectively, so let's dive into those now. According to the EMS guide, the guidance contained within is intended for emergencies involving packaged dangerous goods transported in accordance with the provisions of the IMDG code. It is not intended for emergencies involving bulk cargoes or any other fire or spillage on board ship that does not involve packaged dangerous goods. The guide is specifically designed to be used for shipboard emergencies where the master and crew must respond to a fire or spillage without external assistance. It's essential to note that the guide should only be used as guidance and not as a substitute for proper training or professional assistance when available. According to the EMS guide, the actions listed are intended to be followed in the event of a fire or spillage involving dangerous goods without any external assistance. In addition to the emergency schedules, the EMS guide also includes an index that lists UN numbers in increasing order, with their relevant fire and spillage schedules listed beside them. This makes it easy to find the appropriate schedules for a specific substance in case of emergency. These actions provide general guidelines for handling such situations. The guide also includes emergency fire schedules, which are listed in column 15 of the dangerous goods list in volume 2 of the IMDG code. There are 10 emergency fire schedules in total, ranging from fire schedule Alpha to fire schedule Juliet. Each substance listed in the dangerous goods list has a relevant fire schedule and spillage schedule listed in column 15. Let's take a closer look at fire schedule Alpha. Fire Schedule Alpha is a set of actions to be taken in the event of a fire involving a dangerous good. Similar to Fire Schedule Alpha, there are also Fire Schedule Bravo, Fire Schedule Charlie, and so on, up to Fire Schedule Juliet. For example, if I want to check details for fire safety measures, I will go to the Index page, check the page number for fire safety measures and go to the Concerned page to fetch the details. 
The emergency schedules for spillage, on the other hand, range from spillage schedule alpha to spillage schedule Zulu, with 26 schedules in total. Each dangerous good listed in the dangerous goods list has a relevant emergency schedule for both fire and spillage listed in column 15. For example, let's take a closer look at spillage schedule alpha for toxic substances. General comments and specific actions are listed in the event of a spill on deck, under deck, and in other special cases. Now, let's take a closer look at the Medical First Aid Guide or MFAG, which provides advice on treatment in case of exposure to particular dangerous goods and advice on the medicines to be carried on board while transporting these certain cargoes. One important point to note is mentioned in the introduction of the MFAG, the Medical First Aid Guide should be used in conjunction with the information provided in the IMDG Code, EMS Guide, IBC Code, and IGC Code. The guide begins with an introduction and a brief description of how to use it. The guide also includes tables numbered 1 to 20, which provide information on specific circumstances, as well as appendices that provide comprehensive information about treatment and a list of medicines to be used. Now this is a brief description which explains how to use this guide. This guide is divided into sections basically, and there is a three steps approach which we need to follow. Step 1 is emergency action and diagnosis. We have to start here. Step 2 is referring to tables as I told you, these tables provide brief instructions for some special circumstances. Step 3 is appendices. Appendices provide comprehensive information and the list of drugs or medicines which need to be taken. So let us have a look at step 1 which is emergency action and diagnosis. So this is based on the signs and symptoms that the casualty is showing like does the casualty need to be rescued from a polluted atmosphere? If yes then go to table 1 and refer to the instructions given there. And if no, check that has the breathing stopped? If yes, the breathing has stopped? Refer to Table 2 and 3. If no breathing has not stopped, so the next question which is acts. This is the casualty unconscious? If yes he is unconscious, go to Table 4 and follow the instructions. And if the answer to this question is no, proceed to the very next question, which is acts. So this is how this guide is used. Next is diagnosis. The question asked here is that, is the chemical known by UN number or product label? If the answer is yes, then refer to the column on the right and if the answer is no, then the treatment is again based on the symptoms. If the casualty's breathing is rapid, shallow, difficult, irregular or deep, then we have to refer to Table 3 and Appendix 3. If the casualty has a cough wheezing, hoarseness or severe breathlessness, then we have to refer to Table 9 Appendix 9. In the same way, all these symptoms are given and the appropriate tables and appendices which we need to refer to are given against that. So let us learn how to read the tables. The tables in the MFAG provide brief instructions for treatment, while the appendices provide more detailed and comprehensive information on treatment. Table 1 provides instructions for rescue, Table 2 provides instructions for CPR, and Table 3 provides instructions for oxygen administration and control ventilation, with full advice on oxygen administration given in Appendix 3. So this is also mentioned in Table's appendices. Appendices provide detailed and comprehensive information and steps which need to be followed in case of exposure to the dangerous goods coming back to Step 1. So this is the proper way in which we use this guide. First on the basis of symptoms we check which table or appendix to refer to and then we refer to that particular table and that particular appendix which provide the correct steps which needs to be taken for treatment of the casualty. Our next topic in the supplement is reporting procedures. This section begins with the contents page which includes 1. General principles for ship reporting systems and ship reporting requirements. Two. Guidelines for reporting incidents involving dangerous goods. 3. Guidelines for reporting incidents involving harmful substances and or marine pollutants. Appendix. Protocol 1 to MARPOL. Articles 8 of MARPOL. 
You can check the general principles, guidelines for reporting incidents involving dangerous goods and harmful substances and or marine pollutants here. Procedures includes reports which can be sent as follows. 1. Sailing Plan, SP. 2. Position Report, PR. 3. Deviation Report, DR. 4. Final Report, FR. 5. Dangerous Goods Report, DG. 6. Harmful Substances Report, HS. 7. Marine Pollutants Report, MP. 8. Any Other Report. Now we will check the standard reporting format and procedures mentioned in the supplement. Sections of the ship reporting format which are inappropriate should be omitted from the report. Where language difficulties may exist, the languages used should include English, using where possible the standard marine navigational vocabulary. Alternatively, the International Code of Signals may be used to send detailed information. When the International Code is used, the appropriate indicator should be inserted in the text, after the alphabetical index. For route information, latitude and longitude should be given for each turn point, expressed as in C below, together with type of intended track between these points, for example, RL, Rum Line, GC, Great Circle, or Coastal, or, in the case of coastal sailing, the estimated date and time of passing significant points expressed by a six-digit group as in B as shown on the screen. The table shows the standard reporting format and procedures. You need to check the table for any information you need regarding the same. Guidelines for detailed reporting requirements for dangerous goods, harmful substances and marine pollutants are given in this section along with the probability for discharging them. Here we can check Protocol 1 to MARPOL which consists of provisions concerning reports on incidents involving harmful substances, in accordance with Article 8 of the Convention. Article 1 to Article 5 are listed under this section. Article 1, Duty to Report. Article 2, When to Make Reports. Article 3, Contents of Report. Article 4, Supplementary Report. Article 5, Reporting Procedures. Article 8 of MARPOL includes reports on incidents involving harmful substances. You can check the screen for the details. Now we come to the next chapter in the supplement which is recommendations on the safe use of pesticides in ships. This chapter begins with the contents page. It includes, revised recommendations on the safe use of pesticides in ships. Recommendations on the safe use of pesticides in ships applicable to the fumigation of cargo holds. Amendment to the recommendations on the safe use of pesticides in ships applicable to the fumigation of cargo holds. Revised recommendations on the safe use of pesticides in ships applicable to the fumigation of cargo transport units. Each of the above mentioned topics are further broken into different elements so that it is easy to fetch correct and complete information. Every chapter has an appendix section to clarify any doubts regarding any important term. Whenever you need assistance regarding the recommendations on how to use the pesticides YPU can refer to this index column. The next chapter in the IMDG supplement is the INF code that is International Code for the Safe Carriage of Packaged Irradiated Nuclear Fuel, Plutonium and High-Level Radioactive Wastes on Board Ships. Contents for this section are, Chapter 1, General, Chapter 2, Damage Stability, Chapter 3, Fire Safety Measures, Chapter 4, Temperature Control of Cargo Spaces, Chapter 5, Structural Consideration, Chapter 6, Cargo Securing Arrangements, Chapter 7, Electrical Power Supplies, Chapter 8, Radiological Protection, Chapter 9, Management and Training. Chapter 10. Shipboard Emergency Plan. Chapter 11. Notification in the event of an incident involving INF cargo. Appendix Form of International Certificate of Fitness for the Carriage of INF Cargo. Any person who wants to check any information regarding INF code can check this index first to fetch the details faster. A form of International Certificate of Fitness for the Carriage of INF Cargo is displayed on the screen. You can go through the form to check out the details.
Finally, we come to the last chapter in the IMDG code supplement. The Appendix. This chapter consists of the resolutions and circulars related to the IMDG code and supplement, which contains specifics for Part 7 of IMDG code including stowage and segregation. The content section of the appendix chapter includes IMO Assembly Resolutions Resolutions of the Maritime Safety Committee Circulars of the Maritime Safety Committee and of the Marine Environment Protection Committee Resolution and Circulars of the Facilitation Committee Circulars of the Subcommittee on Carriage of Cargoes and Containers We are delighted to inform you that the Academy app is now officially accessible on the Google Play Store for all those eager to embark on their learning journey. Thank you for watching this video. We hope that you will now find it significantly easier to navigate the IMDG code supplement. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.